Hello, everyone. Welcome to Trino Fest 2023. Uh, my name is Cole Bowden. I'm joined here by Manfred Moser. We'll be your <laughs> host for this event. We're excited to have all of you. So two day event, breaking the content up into two different days so that you can watch all of it without getting too tired, which we think is going to make a better experience. And we've got a really awesome lineup of talks for you. Uh, we think you're going to be able to learn a lot about what's going on in the Trino ecosystem best practices for using it. And of course, we've got our focus. It's the Data Lake House Summer Camp, so we'll be hearing all about all of the lake houses in Trino. Manfred, how excited are you? Um, a lot more excited than you. This is awesome. Like, you know, Commander Banban is going to join us, and he is sitting on our shoulder, obviously. Um, and um, the talks are just amazing. Like, when we got uh, all the proposals and stuff, there were so many interesting things to to share with you all. I'm really looking forward to the next two days. Obviously, we know a little bit more than you all, but stay tuned. You saw on the agenda, really cool stuff is coming. And we're going to start it all off with the keynote from my team that we've been working hard to pull together. Um, pretty impressive numbers, all very exciting, don't you think? Yeah, I think it's, it's always fun to give that community update of what's been going on in Trino. Uh, it always seems like there's so much development happening. Uh, there's a couple slides in that keynote deck that I'm personally a big fan of that I think are, are pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, no, it's, it's, that. yeah, it's, it's really good to see what's going on. And, and uh, we like sharing it, obviously, right? Like you and me are very closely involved with the releases and like hanging on Slack, answering questions and stuff day in, day out. Um, obviously, a very different perspective for people that just use Trino out there in the real world and having real experiences and, and headaches with it. And, and successes and uh, coming here to celebrate that with them is really excellent. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, what we also have to talk about is how do we actually make this happen today? And that is thanks to our sponsors. Um, really awesome. We got support from Starburst as our main steward of the Trino community, employing many uh, empl the maintainers and contributors, also the CTOs, Martin, Dane, and David at Starburst. Very excellent. But also, um, we got uh, our sponsors, Alaxio and AWS, joining us as well. Major contributors and uh, members of the Trino community beyond Starburst. Uh, as you know, many others will join us today in the presentations. As you know, AWS, a very common platform for running Trino on EKS or even Amazon Athena. Uh, Alaxio, a caching engine that uh, allows us to run Trino even faster that you'll uh, see a presentation later on today. So, and of course, Starburst also offering Starburst Enterprise and Starburst Galaxy. Everyone is very involved in the Trino community and really pulling together and working together, making Trino a better and better project. And Martin is going to show us in the keynote what some of those advances are. Yeah, and I think our lineup is awesome. Uh, there's so many different talks from a really diverse array of things. Uh, I want to welcome everyone once again. I really like in the chat, we have people introducing where they're from. I've seen India, Colombia, uh, England. So we're, we're all over the world already with just a few. So everyone say hi if you want. We're going to be monitoring the chat. Uh, a lot of our speakers for this day are going to be in the chat as well, able to answer any questions you may have. So feel free to be active, ask away. There's going to be lots of people with lots of information and knowledge ready and eager to help you out. So Feel free to be all over the place and talk because that's what it's there for. So, yeah, I really love the like international distribution, as we know, obviously from the website and and how the traffic hits Trino and where downloads are coming from. We are all over the world, right? Like China, India, very big communities there. We had last time uh, people from Singapore join us, and obviously Europe and North America is very big but also saw South America entrances and stuff like that. So it's really good to see Trino like flourish all across the world. And we, we love having you all. It's awesome. And let's get this show off the ground and make it a huge success. Yeah. So with that said, I think we're about ready to kick it over to Martin for our keynote. He's going to be giving us a talk about the state of Trino, everything that has happened within the last six months since Trino Summit in November. And also a bit of a highlight of the roadmap of what's to come. Uh, so you'll see a lot of the things that were on that Trino Summit roadmap. We're going to get to report that we've made progress on those things. And now there's new things that we're going to be working on in Trino. It's always improving, always getting better. You'll get to hear about all of the releases, performance improvements, 
big features and changes that have made it the best query engine out there. So, And there he is, Martin, ready to roll. All right, let me share my screen here. I'm going to leave this go. place for you to share. OK. Uh, OK, perfect. Uh, thank you, Manfred and Cole, for the, for the intro. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night uh, to everyone, wherever you are. I see we have people all over the world, which is great to see. Um, so uh, as, as Cole was saying, we're going to go over uh, some of the things that have been happening in the last few months uh, in the Trino project and, and then talk a bit about some of the things that we're working on right now that are, we expect to come, come up in the, in the near future. Um, so before we start, like, I just want to say the, the project is on fire. Like we have, um, I mean, there's, it's as active as it's ever been. Uh, we, we've been doing releases uh, almost nonstop, uh, about one release every one to two weeks, which is the target we've set, we've set for ourselves uh, all the way so, since we started the project back in 2012. Uh, so far, we've done about 16 releases, and there's going to be one coming up in the next couple of days. We had a lot of activity by... More than over overall, more than uh, 660 contributors, which is uh, quite impressive for for a project this size. And we're all, we're almost at uh, 10,000 members on Slack, so uh, we're we're getting there. It's it's been growing ever since uh, 2019 when we started with about uh, 700 people in, in the channel. So it's been it's been uh, uh, pretty impressive. And it's growing about, uh, we're, we're adding about 10 people per, per day, which is kind of impressive. It's, it's, it's good to see all these new people join the, the community. And at this point, we know of about more than 20,000 people that are involved in, in the project in some way uh, across more than uh, 1,800 companies. So one of the things we've been looking at, uh, we, we've been tracking in the, in the last few months is the ranking of Trino in the DB, DB engines ranking this is a, is a, a ranking uh, maintained by, I think it's some university that they try to look at the popularity of a project across various metrics, like in social media, in documentation, and, and uh, basically how, how, how popular the project is across, across the internet. And Trino has been growing pretty quickly. It's like in the last year, it went from position 96 to 69. And uh, this includes every other project out there you, you can see. So you, you can go and check that out at some point. Um, and of course, like the number of uh, one, one of the metrics we look at is how, how, how many people run into the Trino project through GitHub and how many stars we get on GitHub. Uh, the, the stars end up driving how, how GitHub promotes the, those projects. And, and that, that has been growing also pretty significantly. So we're at over 8,000 stars. Right now, if you haven't given, a, given the project a star and you like the project, please go and do so. Uh, we, we also would like to welcome a couple of new maintainers to the, to the team. We have uh, uh, about uh, 14, 15 maintainers uh, nowadays. Uh, so in the last few months, we added James Petty. He's an engineer from uh, that works at Amazon. He's been working on uh, Athena and EMR for the last, I don't know, I don't know how many years, but he's been involved in Trino uh, for at least five years. So he's uh, he has a lot of experience in, in the project, in the community. So uh, he just joined as a, as a new maintainer. And then Manfred, which, uh, who you already, uh, you already know, he also joined as a maintainer. He's one of the people involved in the uh, developers uh, relations team at Starburst. And he's very, very active in the community, very active with uh, outreach to users, um, contributors. And he's also one of the, of the authors, is uh, one of the co-authors of the, of the Trino book, uh, which uh, we'll, we'll mention uh, a bit more details later. So welcome uh, to James and, and Manfred, to the team. All right, let's talk a bit about what happened in the last, about six months. Uh, so we, we gave an update at the Trino Summit uh, that we did here in 
in, in San Francisco in, in 2022. And we're going to cover a little bit of uh, the things that, that took place in, in the months in between. Uh, back then, one of the things I, I, I talked about was this feature called table functions. And that feature was in progress. There was a, a, a lot of functionality already implemented, but we still needed to complete a few, a few aspects of the feature to, to be able to say it's, it's finally done. So we've gone through that process. Now the feature, the feature is fully complete. And uh, specifically, one of the things that was missing is the ability to, to, take, to, to have uh, functions that take complex queries as inputs. So uh, once, once we added that, that opened the door to a number of uh, uh, new functions and, and, and utilities that, that, that can be very helpful. For example, th this, is, this is something that we implemented a couple of months ago that is can be very useful. It's something that we've, we've heard uh, uh, requests for many, many times, is the ability to select all the columns from a table except a set of columns. So for example, if you have, if you have a huge, uh, a very wide table that has maybe a thousand columns and you want to select everything by two columns, there's no, there wasn't any easy way to do that. So now with table functions, you can do that. So you can see that example here where you can say, uh, select everything from the result of that exclude columns function, and you say exclude the date of birth and social security number uh, columns. Um, another example of a, of, a, of a table function we added recently is the uh, function to generate sequence of numbers. We used to have a function for generating arrays that contain sequence of numbers, but there's some limitations to that in terms of the size of the array and, and, um, and so on. With this function, there's no limit. You can just generate a it generates a single in virtual table with a with a, with a sequence. It can be useful for testing, uh, uh, trying things out, for generating uh, something. You have to generate tables that you join in. Uh, so this is a good way to artificially create that. So in general, table the table functions have opened up the door to a lot of very complex uh, functionality and, and, and utilities. So we, we expect this to keep keep uh, improving over the next, or we expect more, more occurrences of, or implementation of, these fun of, of new functions uh, to happen over the next, next uh, uh, foreseeable future. Um, we made, so we already had a, uh, another set of functions that allow you to do uh, what we call query pass through. Uh, so, for example, if you're interacting with systems like uh, uh, Elasticsearch or, or uh, DBMS, where they may have some features in the language that Trino either doesn't support or, or there are special features that are not part of the SQL standard, uh, previously there was no way of, of taking advantage of that. So, with query pass through, you're able to submit a query to the underlying system. And then uh, have Trino process the results of that query and 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 so on. So that's modeled through through this set set of functions that we call query or raw query in some in some connectors. Um, we already had that. We just kept improving it for some connectors. We added support for Elasticsearch and so on. And then we added a function called procedure, which allows you is similar, but it allows you to execute sort, store procedures in SQL Server. So this can be useful if you already have. Uh, some uh, um, code inside your database that you want to be able to take advantage of. All right, so another area that has seen um, some improvements is the fault tolerant execution support. We added this feature, uh, well, we, we worked on it about a couple of years ago. We, we ended up uh, rolling it out last year. And then over the, over the last few months, we've been improving it and basically making it easier to use, more performant. Uh, we added support for using HDFS as, a, as the exchange pooling, which is um, if, if you're not running on, on a cloud environment where you have object storage, uh, this can be useful for you. Uh, you can now start using this feature by, by running on, on top of HDFS as the exchange. And then of course, we added support for multiple connectors this being able to take advantage of this feature requires some changes in connectors because in the presence of retries, the, the connector had to guarantee that it's not gonna duplicate data, it's gonna, not gonna lose data and so on. So uh, we retrofitted uh, uh, many of the connectors to be able to take advantage of 
of this uh, functionality. So if you haven't tried it, uh, I, I encourage you to get, take, it, take a look, uh, give it a try. It's actually a pretty cool feature. All right. So when when we're trying to, when, when we're coming up with this slides for this this talk, we're trying to figure out okay, what are is there a theme to the things that have been happening in the last few months? And sometimes the roadmap for the project is uh, organic. It, it depends on what people are interested in working on, what contributors are willing to uh to, to spend time and effort on so sometimes it's hard to come up with okay this is a specific area that has been that people have been focusing on but uh so when looking at everything that happened we we observe that there's there's um, an entire area where it has been a quite significant activity and it has this has been around supporting the lake house ecosystem better um there are once you start running Trino on a, on a lake house, it's not just running queries. It's like, okay, how do you ma manage your data? How do you manage evolution of your data? How do you uh, make sense of what's going on in the system? How do you better integrate with all the third-party um, systems that are out there? So we, we end up uh, working collectively on a set of features to facilitate the uh, data management and evolution of, of, of data warehouse. This is uh, these are production to support production cases where you have tables and and then over time those tables need to evolve by, by changing data types of columns, uh, uh, changing names of columns, adding columns, removing columns, and and it, how you do it with without breaking your uh, your queries, without breaking your your production workloads, that's, that's, those are some of the challenges, and what tools can you use to do that? And so now we have a, a number of features that, that make it easier to, uh, to perform those changes. And then we added, in terms of compa compatibility, we added support for a uh, number of different catalogs in Iceberg, which uh, seem to be quite popular in, in the wild. Uh, in the same in the same vein, one of the one of the things we've been observing is people have been migrating from Hive to Iceberg or to Delta Lake or Hui uh, across the board. It's like uh, any, any any anyone we talk to, they are in some path of that uh, in some uh, some some stage of that journey of migrating from from Hive, which is at this point uh, considered a legacy table format to one of the newer formats. So we've added some uh, some tooling and some functions to to make that easier. Uh, there's a, a, a function we added called migrate, which allows you to very easily, uh, uh, if you have a, a table in Hive, you can very easily convert it to an iceberg table. It just registers the metadata for that table and makes it visible in an iceberg catalog. So you don't have to uh, you, you can do all of this within, from within Trino. And then we have other, uh, another set of functions for registering, registering and unregistering tables in, uh, in a couple of the connectors. Uh, I think this is implemented for Iceberg and Delta Lake. And this allows you to register uh, if you have data that, has the, that already conforms to the Data Lake or, or Delta Lake or Iceberg format, you can register that into into a, the, a catalog and then start querying it from within Trina. So this wouldn't be, I mean, high level features, I mean, it's all nice. Uh, people always care about performance and we have a lot of performance improvements in the, this is just in the last six months. It, there were too many to try to synthesize and, and summarize what's going on. So we decided to just list them all. I mean, there's not, meant for you to read <laughs> right now. I'm not going to go over all of them. Just want to give you an idea of everything that has been happening in the last few months and how fast the project is improving, how, how much uh, investment and effort people are putting in, in making things faster across the board. And this is not the only one. I mean, there's more. Uh, so improvements all over, over, all over the place in the engine, at the language level, the execution level. Um, there's there's improvements for when querying data from for writing data. There's improvements inside connectors, uh, improvements at the file format level. So it's all over the place. 
So if you if you're running an old version, I would I would highly recommend uh, look at the newer versions, upgrade because you're you're going to see a number of uh, of benefits in terms of uh, performance. And of course, that translates into uh, lower latency, lower CPU, and 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 reduced cost when you're uh, running Trino clusters. All right, uh, on the kind of this is kind of the, on the at the other end of the spectrum. So this is we we're already, we also been investing investing in um, some changes that make it easier to operate Trino, make it easier to understand what's going on with Trino, to troubleshoot, debug. And this, this can be both for developers that are developing on Trino and, try to, and are trying to figure out how to make the system better, but also for administrators where they may get questions about what's going on with my query. And, and up until, un, un, until now, yeah, you can look at, you can run explain, explain, analyze, get some idea of what's going on, maybe if you know the system very well, you can start looking, uh, you can go and look at the UI and try to understand all the metrics. Maybe you can look at um, some of the information that is exposed at a lower level and try to make sense of it, but that's kind of uh, com very complicated. And it doesn't capture everything that one might uh, want to know about uh, what was happening with a query. So one of the things we did in the last, uh, in the last couple of months actually, this, this happened it's been brewing for a long time, but it finally happened in the last couple of months, is the ability to trace query execution at a very granular level. So we can see every part of the query, when it executes, uh, what is it doing at every point, and then how that lines up in, in, the, in the timeline. So you can see if things are getting bottlenecked by uh, communications, if, if things are... Um, uh, if, if there's artificial delays happening, that could be through because of other factors like latency in these delays and so on. And, and, and this is all done via, by using the open telemetry APIs that are, uh, have, have been, become pretty popular in the industry. The nice thing about this is that Trino just uh, is all now all instrumented with open telemetry, and you can just hook it to any. Open telemetry backend and visualization tool. So this 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 particular one is Datadog. So if you're using Datadog, you can just send your open telemetry data to Datadog, and then you can you can go and inspect uh, and, and and dig into what's going on with a, with a query. There's other options. Uh, there's some open source uh, UIs and visualization tools for open telemetry that you can also also take a look at. All right, and and then on the on the client side, one of the areas that has been has seen the heaviest uh, investment is the Python client. There's a lot of activity by many contributors, and and this has involved everything from adding more features that are that, that were missing the client, like support for variable variable precision date uh, date time uh, types, uh, and there's some other types that were missing. Um, we, there are some performance improvements that we, we, we made this uh, recent feature where when you are running queries that, uh, that have parameters, uh, we've streamlined the way the client interacts with the, with the server to reduce the run, number of run trips and reduce the, basically reduce the latency of, uh, of an execution as a result. So if you have very short queries that are sensitive to latency, for example, the client and server are, uh, are far apart, they may be, may be in different geographical regions, then this should, should cause an immediate um, effect in, in performance, uh, of servo performance from the client side. And, and then uh, as, as, as part of all the, all the effort, we added support for uh, and better compatibility with uh, uh, third-party uh, systems support for SQL Alchemy, which is, uh, makes it e easier or makes it possible to use uh, this client in, in uh, tools like uh, Superset and so on. And on top of this, of this, uh, of this Python client and everything we built, now DVT Cloud supports Trino out of the box, it uses this client to, to that integration. 
there's a lot more uh, to talk about uh, around the Python ecosystem. And uh, I believe there are some talks today and tomorrow that we'll get into more details. So stay tuned. So very, very briefly, uh, let's talk a bit about some things that are happening right now. And I mean, the roadmap, like I said, is, is dynamic, it's organic, it's, it's driven by what people uh, and the, the people involved in the project are willing to, to spend their time and effort on. So if there are things that you're interested in seeing happen, like, of course, please engage uh, with, the, with the group of maintainers and contributors, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll come up with ways to, to address that. Uh, but high level, some of the things are going on. So the SQL 2023 uh, specification just came out. And it has a number of usability, usability improvements and enhancement. And yeah, there's usability improvements that we're starting to look into. Uh, one obvious one that uh, I think every developer would like is the ability to use hexadecimal or binary uh, literals. Like every programming language out there has that, and SQL didn't, didn't until now. So. Now, now you'll be able to specify numeric literals using that syntax. And the second one is the ability to use underscores in numbers, which is uh, if you're dealing with a lot of big numbers, having under being able to split your numbers with underscores is um, is can be can be very handy. And every language out there has that these days, so people are used to doing that. And I think it will improve the readability of of your queries if you start taking advantage of that. Those two are already merged and they will be out in the next release. Then the spec has also um, a lot of improvements around JSON. It introduces a JSON type. We already have a JSON type in Trino, but the spec formalizes it. So we're now starting to look at, okay, what are, are there any differences between what we are doing and what the spec does? How does it relate to all the JSON functions that we added uh, recently in the last six months? So we're going to start uh, looking into that and, and hopefully implementing that compatibility in the next uh, in the next few months too. Uh, we have in progress support for the JSON table function, which is, is is one of the remnants of the JSON support that we were working on in the last few months. This is a function that allows you to take a JSON document that can be complex, nested, highly nested. And, and, exp and extract pieces or things out of that JSON document and expose them as a table in line in the, in the, in the query. So it's a table function, so it produces a table, and it does it by unpacking in some way driven by the query author um, and, uh, using, that JSON that, that, using that function. So uh, that's in progress. Hopefully, in the next, next couple of months, we'll, we'll have it in. Uh, we're also working on a Snowflake connector. There's uh, this uh, uh, an effort across multiple people from multiple companies, and the code is, uh, I think, it's it's in pretty good shape. So we're we're in the in process of integrating it. There's a talk, I think, I believe, it's tomorrow by uh, our friends at Bloomberg that goes in. It will go into more detail. So if you if you're interested, please uh, go go see that talk. And then finally, we are doing an, a bunch of work to get Trino ready to run on Java 21. So right now we run on Java 17, we require Java 17. There are many, many improvements in 21 in terms of um, language features that we're gonna take advantage of that will make the code more maintainable, easier to develop. But there's also performance improvements and there's new APIs that allow us to do a number of things that, that we need for Project Hummingbird which is a, uh, I, 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 we mentioned this uh, in, the last, in the last summit and we're, we're probably gonna, we're gonna talk up more about this in the coming months. We're making a lot of uh, progress on that. Project Hummingbird is a, an effort to improve performance of the core evaluation engine. And this includes everything from improving the uh, operators like aggregations, joins, the evaluation loop, streamlining the columnar, uh, Evaluator in in Trino and improving the the, the format, the table, sorry, the uh, file format readers and so on. So anything that has to do with raw performance, we're we're bundling together in this 
in this project. So some of the features in Java 21 are going to be the foundation to be able to pull that off. So Java 21 is coming up, coming out in September, and we want to be ready for that and, and be able to make the switch at, at that point. So stay tuned. We're going to keep uh, talking about Project Hummingbird in the next, in the next uh, few months uh, as we continue to make progress on that. All right, so if you want to learn more about uh, Trino, uh, the Trino book is always a good resource. You can download it from uh, Starburst, courtesy of Starburst for free. Uh, you can get a PDF. And we, well, recently, yeah, recently we launched the second edition, so it has many of the improvements that happened in Trino over the last year or so. And if, you, if English is not your language, we have a Polish edition that just came out. We, we have a big community of developers and users in Poland. So um, you can look for that book uh, from O'Reilly. And there's an, an edition in Chinese coming soon. So um, expect that if, you, if, if, you, if you're a Chinese speaker. Right, and finally, if you wanna get involved in the project, always Slack is the best place to, to be. Uh, all the developers, uh, all the in the Trino project, all the users that are actively using tri, uh, Trino are, are in that Slack. You can ask questions. You can find out what's going on by by engaging there. If you want to contribute with development, um, and if you're just just getting started, there's a set of issues that we tag with a good first issue tag in on GitHub. Uh, they are kind of an easy way to get going. Like we try to, to classify issues that are don't require a lot of upfront knowledge about how Trino works to be able to get going. So if you want to start getting involved, that's a good place. And any help we can, we can get in terms of blog posts, if you want to help promote the project, if you, wanna, if you are doing something interesting you want to share, uh, you can always uh, I mean, reach out to us. We, we we can help you write a blog post, or we can uh, get you on the Trino community broadcast. Uh, Manfred and, and Cole will take care of that. So with that, uh, thank you. And we can go to questions. We have a few minutes if anyone has any questions. That was awesome, Martin. Really good overview and amazing to see all the things that happen in the community, isn't it? And if anyone has any questions, feel free to just ask them in the chat uh, and then we'll read them aloud and Martine will get you an answer. There were a few during the talk, but they were helpfully answered already, so. Yeah, um, it's, it's great to see all the changes. And in our next sessions, we're gonna like sort of pivot quite a bit from um, the theoretical new feature sets and like what's going on to Actual, actual practical experience. Our next talk will be from Salesforce, um, which will talk about anomaly detection for Salesforce production data with Trino, which is quite amazing to see that on the one hand, this has been a long-term open source project. And at the same time, big, well-known companies have been using this in production for all sorts of use cases that you wouldn't originally think about. And that's the kind of like... Um, innovation we love seeing because it enlightens us to you know think about new aspects right martin like sometimes you're like oh you can do this with trino it's like really interesting sometimes isn't it yeah it's um yeah we we need um yeah we need uh, uh people to we people talk more about what they are doing. Uh, sometimes uh, what they are doing can be very educational for other people. And I mean, there's there's a lot of hidden nuggets in, in what Trino can do, and and it's, it's sometimes hard to hard to find find that, that out because like either it's not well documented or people don't really understand how it can be applied to their use cases. So. Yeah, there's lots of lots of corner cases, especially when it comes to like, you know, smaller features. And, and sometimes it's also interesting, like Cole implemented a feature years ago, and we just talked about this again <laughs> recently and added it to the documentation, a set path and so on. So 
Um, I think also open telemetry will be a, a huge boon to a lot of users where we definitely have to catch up and there'll be a lot of like deep in the detail, in the dirty details stuff happening. So really cool. Yeah. Well, we had some questions, but they were questions about where that ebook is and if we can get the slides downloaded. So I don't think we need to hassle you with those, Martin. <laughs> yeah, the book, the book is, uh, there's a page on the website that has the links to everything. Um, for those of you that want to, like me, that want to actually hold a paperweight around and, <laughs> and, and, and hold something in the hands when they read a the book. And obviously, you can get the PDF from Starburst. And the international editions are also very enlightening to see uh, the older version I saw in Chinese. And you write this book and then you see it in a pretty different language. It's, it's, <laughs> it's very interesting to see. Um, and you cannot make sense of it for sure, <laughs> which is quite well. fun. Thank you very much, Martine. 